はい、テレビ。ああ、ケニオケニオミルさん。はい、カトリーナ。はい、カトリーナ。So, you're not a huge group today, but there's still a few people.、Uh, but I'd like to be on time. So, I'll invite you to your three, Tanya. I don't know if you're there, the camera is off.、Um, to connect a bit with your body. And you might want to stand up or you might just want to stretch where you are and move your body a bit and start noticing what it wants. What it wants to do, what it needs. Okay, Tanya, thanks for letting us know. So I, I like this to be more of a conversation than just myself making a presentation. Of course, I'll kind of introduce a bit how I got to the book and、uh, what it is about. And at some point, we are going together to walk the path towards what I call the structural intelligences. And that's, that's a bit of an experiential journey, not only something to hear about. But feel free to ask questions. And if you read the book and it's not something that's not totally clear, feel free to, to bring that in whenever you feel that's the best time. Ayana. <laughs> nice to see you. Long time. Long time. Miss you. Okay. So I'll, I'll start talking a bit.、Uh, maybe we can keep our microphones off just so if there's any sound doesn't disturb transmission. So this book starts. So he, here's the book. <laughs> Uh, so, it's the translation from the Portuguese version.、Um, and, and it was only possible because a lot of people supported the book. So, there's a little at least of,、uh, of people who supported the book and, and participated in the crowdfunding, crowdfunding project、uh, to translate because translation is quite expensive. And I decided to make a Like a cell, an independent publishing path, which gives me a lot of、uh, ownership and freedom with my book, but makes me pay for everything. That's, you you got to buy your freedom. <laughs>、um, so the book、um, 
it starts out of my curiosity. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a very curious person, very, uh, I like to experiment and I like to um, I don't find out what's going to happen if I try this or try that. I'm a body psychotherapist trained in core energetics. Uh, I'm also trained in TRE, trauma releasing exercises. And I'm also trained in something called inner dance uh, that was developed in the Philippines. And these three um, techniques or approaches, they have a major influence in what is surrendering to the flow of life. So first I did core energetics and and core energetics is a body psychotherapy, so it's it has a psychotherapy perspective. So I want to understand what's happening to the person. There's a lot of talk, um, but there's a lot of a, a lot of the body also. So we go to the body, we move the body, we integrate the body with the process. TRE uh, gave me this perspective of trusting my body completely. So it took off my it removed my therapist uh, attitude of okay so i'm the expert and i'm i'm going to make an intervention and tre was okay the body is the expert <laughs> you just need to get out of the way <laughs> and for me that was like wow that's a bit different <laughs> from what i've been training and working with um but I was very fascinated to you know, watch the body tremor by itself and make its own adjustments and changes uh, as long as I trusted it. But still, TRE has a, you know, is a, there's a set sequence of exercises you do so you can reach tremoring. There is a whole uh, framework on how you win interact with the tremoring and how you uh, stop it or continue it or self-regulate and da, da, da. But then comes inner dance, which in my first experience, I described as TRE with music, but without any preparation, any warm up, purely music playing and some, I don't know, prompts from the, from the facilitator, but very random, <laughs> nothing systematic, nothing organized. And still my body would shake and tremor like it did in TRE, but um, maybe it was the unexpected aspect of it, but the body would tremor and shake in places that were completely new compared to what I would experience in TRE. And that, and that gave me a lot of freedom because that taught me that, okay, that's, an, that's a wisdom in your body, I heard. Dave Bissell is saying that in TRE. And, and Inner then said, let it free. Let it completely free. Let it do its thing. There is no self-regulation. There is no, there is no nothing. There is just it. Let it happen. So I started experimenting with it. The same, the same thing I did with TRE. So when I learned TRE, I would practice TRE every day for an hour because I wanted to know what, what happens, what happens, what's this? How does this work? I want to see. Uh, I don't recommend. I always tell the story and I said, don't recommend. <laughs> it gave me a lot of challenges to deal with in my body because you know it started releasing a lot of stuff and took some time to integrate. But it still was a great experience. <laughs> you know, in the sense, you know, a scientist sometimes has to take the risk. <laughs> and then I did the same thing with the inner dance. So I would experiment for a long time with it, for a long time, like an, an hour or two, lying on the ground, lying on the floor and listening to music and allowing my body to go with it. And at some point, I started to notice that there was some patterns that the body, that would arise in the body. Not movement patterns, but states of consciousness some states of consciousness would often come back into the experience. And after, I don't know, doing that, I don't know how many times, allowed me to notice, oh, wait, I've experienced this before. I've ex I have experienced this state before. So I got interested to in those different states. Interested in. 
So that's how a surrendering to the flow gets born. In parallel to that, I, I, in core energetics, we work with something called character defense structures. Um, there are five of them, and they are related to our uh, developmental trauma. So when we are growing up and developing as an infant or a baby, depending on what happens and, and um, the experiences we have, not being met in our developmental needs, our, our body has to adjust to that, has to, our system, our organism has to adjust to that uh, lack or to that limitation. Um, and that's what we call developmental trauma. And when I first learned about developmental trauma, I learned, I, I, at least the way I integrated it was that it was, a, it was separated. So we have you know, structure one, structure two, ta -ta -ta, structure five, they are separated. And I work with them you know, individually, let's say. And then I read this book from Lawrence Heller that's called Healing Developmental Trauma. And Heller brought me a perspective that it's actually a continuum. There is no sharp separation between the structures. It's, there is a continuum from when we are conceived till when the, the first childhood ends at around seven. And in that continuum, those structures happen. No? Those, those experiences happen, and then we develop the structures to deal with them. And that was a change that, that opened for me the perspective that um, it, there's actually a flow of energy from the moment we are conceived to forever. <laughs> and that flow gets affected by the experiences we have as we develop. And at some point, those two things came together. <clears throat> so the experimentations I was doing with uh, my body and inner dance and the tremoring and the involuntary moment, movements and the flow of the character structures. And what became clear to me at some point of insight is that those states I was experiencing that I thought, as I said, they started to repeat and I started to recognize them. So oh, I've experienced this before. Those states of consciousness I was experiencing, they were actually linked to the character structures. And they were, and they were my organism or whatever, this wisdom in my organism trying to bring me back to something original, to some fundamental energy, to some fundamental uh, intelligence in my, in my body. And that's when the concept of structural intelligence appear. So it took me maybe four or five years just experimenting without, without making assumptions, without trying to interpret or analyze or theorize. It took me five years experimenting before I start giving name, naming things and trying to draw some sort of theory because I wanted to allow it to teach me, to teach me without my mind intervening so much. And that I think is one of the most important things about surrendering to the flow of life. Because at some point, it became clear to me that life was teaching me. And when we surrender to the flow, wisdom of life make, makes itself present and teaches us about, about her, her. I say her because life in Portuguese is a feminine noun. And for me, there is, there is, for me, it's a she. <laughs> for me, this energy is a feminine energy uh, that, that moves me and teaches me and embraces me. 
Um, and sometimes it's very sensual, sometimes it's very powerful, sometimes it's very quiet and profound. But still I have the sense that there's a feminine quality to it. And when I say I, I can see that they can feel a shift in my body, it's something that just opens and gets warm. Anyway, so, <laughs> so there, there was some other influences that I want to share with you. So, so you just have like a, a perspective of uh, what has influence. So I, I spoke about chronogenetics theory and inner dance, but there's also an influence from Tibetan Buddhism. I'm not a Buddhist, but I really enjoy Buddhism. And I'm, and there was a time I was reading a lot of Tibetan Buddhism. These books would you know, come to me and I would read them and, and they were, I don't know, they were clicking with something inside. And so the, the experience of, the, of emptiness, so they talk about emptiness and, and the wisdom of emptiness and compassion, bodhicitta. And through surrendering to the flow of life, through this experience, there are moments when you experience bodhicitta's compassion, moments when you experience emptiness. And I thought that was very fascinating how a process, you know, because it's so complex, it seems so complex in the books to get to, you know, experience compassion and experience uh, emptiness. And then this process that's based on the wisdom of the, of the organism, it takes me, the wisdom of life, it takes me to experience compassion and wisdom, the wisdom of emptiness. So that was very fascinating too. But the wisdom of emptiness helped me detach a bit from my identity. So when I'm experiencing surrendering to the flow, it, there is a detachment from my identity because the body is flowing in such a free way that there's no room to identify myself with any of the movements. It's just flowing. It's just moving. And that helps, for example, when an emotion comes up. Let's say I got a, a wave of anger or sadness, uh, of fear. It helps me not to identify with the emotion, not even to identify it as an emotion, but just as a wave of experience, a wave of energy. So that's how the wisdom of emptiness supported me in, in getting to, the, to this experience. I think those are the major, the major influences I've had when going through the process that come that end up ended up in the book and in this work. So this work I usually do in groups. It's possible to do in, with one person, but it's really amazing to work with groups because then, as a group, we go together through these stages of. This is stages of consciousness. And somehow the group support each other, you know, in the group. And, and all that needs to happen, it's actually to set up an intention. Uh, when, when there was a time when I was going to see a client and I want to get ready for the client, I would you know, stand in a grounding stance and I would connect myself. That's a, I think this is in Barbara Brennan's book, Hands of Light, something similar to this. So I would first connect to the earth energy and then to the heavens. And then I'll bring those two energies into my chest, into my center. And as I would move them, my body would start to shake uh, every time. And as I moved them, there was a slight different flavor as they pass through each part of my body until they reached my chest. And, 
And those flavors were the same states of consciousness that later became really evident. And that later were related to the character structures. Okay, I'm gonna sip on water. Is there any questions so far? Is it clear now? I have no questions, but um, it's extremely interesting for me what you are talking about. Um, I'm going to read that book. Uh, I just found a link where I could order it because I'm also a theory provider and uh, I'm in the middle of uh, my training in core energetics. Mm. I'm also a body therapist under the shield of Ilan Lev Method, which is uh, an Israeli um, um, method and I'm going to be a movement class teacher under that method as well. Uh, I also do access bars and yeah, many other methods. I'm not going to brag here about it, but uh, um, the thing that uh, really um, caught my attention, uh, I also do dance. I, I, uh, I dance five rhythms and biodanza. Um, and uh, the thing that really caught me was that you said that in the inner dance uh, there is no self-regulation and then I thought I thought to myself wow then how do you integrate it because if there is no self-regulation how do you do it then how, how do you do it? I mean because I, I I've been also in the training of um, uh, trauma constellations or yeah by Franz Rupert and uh, then I noticed some ladies uh, who came with the same problem and they, they, they had been coming for 15 years with the same thing, crying over. Like, and, and then I could observe because I can read the body. So I could see there was no self-regulation. They were just crying, 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 not integrating it at all. That's why they kept on continuing the same thing without uh, uh, jumping out of the trauma loop, right? So when you have no uh, self-regulation, uh, uh, what's the point? <laughs> what's the point of doing it? Yeah. Just to real, because, uh, sorry, uh, because if you re uh, release, re releasing is one thing, but this is, that's not the, the clue. The clue is to integrate it. Uh, and that's how self-regulation is also built, right? But if you have no self-regulation, like if you don't work on that uh, structure, what's the point of releasing? Because you can get re-traumatized in a way mm -hmm. if you release way too much without mm -hmm. feeling how much the portion of vibration vibrations uh how what did it do to your body what has it done to it right so this is what, what it really like <laughs> yeah and to be honest katarina i don't know if i have an answer you know uh, there's there's another influence to this book which is my great great friend richmond richmond heath he's a tre australia provider trainer and Richmond and I were great friends. And he, he gave me the best questions I've ever had. So whenever I bring something to him, he questions it. So, okay, but, and then he points something else. And that makes me think. So there's, there's a lot of rich money in this book. It's, you know, he's in the ink. He's in the ink in the letters that were, was printed, you know. <laughs> and it's something Richmond and I, we've been talking a lot about. And he provokes me a lot on that. Is about self-regulation. He sent me some videos and some stuff, and we discuss about that. And uh, in some places where you know there is no concept of self-regulation, no one gets uh, dissociated and disorganized, and, and and that's the thing with inner dance. Uh, I've well, maybe there are some experiences, I, I don't know, but in, in, in my experiences and with the people around me, I never saw someone getting ill from it. 
uh, I've seen some people have strong experiences in needing a container and support to go through that. Um, but there's there's an element of trust. I don't know. It, it can be harmful. I agree with you. <laughs> we see that happening. But, but there's something else. There's something else. Uh, and I'm not sure that's right. I'm, I'm, I'm just opening the possibility, you know, like when Richmond kind of instigates me. Oh, let's, let's just consider the possibility that we can trust this wisdom um, without being afraid of it, without being concerned that people get overwhelmed. So I, that's why I don't think I have an answer. And this is also interesting because one of my teachers, Ilan Lev, who is now 83 and he moves like no one else in the world. I, he's, he's my idol. I could easily marry him if he would <laughs> like me. <laughs> um, and uh, when you, because this method is also very much, um, well, it's like Feldenkrais. It's, it's a very, very uh, strange method. And the, the body gets this kind of movement that is really unexpected and uh, you uh, because i i started with tre seven years ago and uh, i already had that wisdom or knowledge and polyvagal theory and everything and then i come to this crazy man from israel and then i see what he's doing uh, with the patient and then i'm supposed to do the same and then i see that some people get flooded Obviously, they, they do because I see it, and, and then and then I could use my knowledge from from TRE how to bring them back to to the ground. But then he says, "No, you don't do it. They have to trust the process." Uh, so it's what you say here resonates with with the wisdom of Ilan Lev, which uh, and I I think even though he's eighty three, he's the most open minded man. Uh, I have ever met because he he doesn't care he never wrote any book he just has his wisdom and he went through a series of different trainings and he managed to establish his own method and then I see him and he, he's like hey don't touch the people they will find their way and then I think like how come how come <laughs> and I got angry several times oh goodness I, I, I think I'm the the I was the worst student for him because I always was in the opposition of what he was uh, teaching us. Of course, I received the the, the way we treated people, but uh, but uh, for a long time I couldn't really um, <laughs> say yes to everything he said. But now, when I hear what you are saying, and um, well, maybe there is something new coming to the world, and. Uh, mm -hmm. We will see. We have to stay open-minded as well, because we don't need we we don't know everything, and the body has so many secrets that we haven't discovered yet. And yeah, we'll we'll see. So first, I need to read the book, and then I could then I would really like to discuss it with you, because it's yes. it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, in surrender to the flow of life, I see self-regulation happening, but I don't need to talk about it. It just happens. I can see people taking care of themselves. And I can see people surrendering to it and going to very profound and intense places. And then there's something in it that reorganizes people. And as you said, I just want to keep my mind open. I just to keep myself open to see if there is another possibility if there is something different that I'm not seeing yet, that I haven't heard yet. But then what about people with borderline? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Because this is kind of difficult as well. Um, so, well, I don't know. It's ju it just came to me. like Because they, they can't be in the body. But I had some clients who came here for different sorts of treatments. And... Uh, I don't know. Uh, 
is there any stock regulation in them or are they so disconnected that they that they can't get like they can't surrender actually at all what what would you yeah i i don't think i have worked with borderline in that yet um experience highly <laughs> um but i like to keep myself open you know and i want to when you have an experience with that i want you to let me know how that was because <laughs> i can see i want this this man about from israel you're talking about it it feels very connected and i can see in many places in the world the same wisdom being brought in different ways in different language in different slightly different concepts but in the end it's the same thing um, it's the same wisdom of life surrendering to this wisdom of life and and there is there's always a sense that this wisdom of life has the intelligence and the knowing to support people in their journey and at least that's what I've been seeing happening. Uh, I really miss working with groups because of the pandemic. So I haven't worked with any groups for two years almost. And I can't wait this to be <laughs> over if it's ever going to be. So I can start working with people again <laughs> in groups in the same room, no masks, and you know, everybody breathing and sweating and <laughs> alive. Um, let's see what's gonna happen um so let me get back to where i was um, let's see if there's anything else i want to share with you before we i talk about the structure intelligences mm. okay we can go there so what I see is that as we move and surrender to that energy, surrender to that wisdom, surrender to the flow of life, whatever needs to move going, is going to move. Whether in the body or in our emotions or in our thoughts, uh, it's going to move. And in my experience, it's always going to move to the extent that the people and the group and the person can allow it to move. Uh, and of course, when we need a group, there's way more support and people allow much, much more of it to move. But it's fascinating because people can go from I don't know, laughing to crying to anger to bliss in matters of seconds. And they can just have a soft, gentle experience too. Um, and for me, the key point is not to be attached to any of the experiences, but just let them flow as they flow. So now I'll, I'll, I'll describe to you the path that I talk about, the structuring intelligences and this, this path that the energy does when, when we, are, we get conceived as a baby. And... And when it gets disturbed, it generates what we call the character defense structures. And that our goal is to return, to bring it back to the, to the point where it's, it, it's not distorted, it's not uh, disturbed, where it remains uh, in its essence, in its origin. And of course, you know, if the person has never done any body work, any therapy, they will have one experience. If I'm with a core energetic group, it's another experience. You know, uh, last time I did it, really amazing was in Holland and Lean was there. It was really amazing in the convention, core energetics convention. And I can't wait for Mexico. <laughs> Yeah, 
you're muted, Lean, but I, I read your lips. <laughs> Me too. I can't wait. And it was fantastic. I loved it. Yes. You know, and I just want to let you know that the link that you sent in my, my computer's not, it's not opening. Oh. The Zoom link. That's, I think, part of maybe why people aren't here. I don't know why. I got it on my phone, but it wouldn't go on my computer. Oh, that's unusual. It's really, it's weird. So I'm going to try it on my iPad and see if that works. Okay. Yeah. I'm leaving and I'm coming back. Goodbye. Okay. <laughs> Yes. So see if you need to, I don't know, drink some water, go quickly go to the toilet before we continue this. We've been talking for more than half an hour. Did you just say something that I just missed? <laughs> I said, if anyone <laughs> wants to have a quick toilet break and oh, come back. Right. So we can... No, I, I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, I also forgot to mention in the beginning that I've been postponing this lounge for many, many months because <laughs> I became a father in the middle of the way. And that has been an awesome experience. And I, uh, and I said, okay, let's do it before it's five years past. So here we are. Um, we didn't have much time to promote it or an energy, you know, because most of my energy has been with my little girl that's almost one year old. I can't believe she's almost okay. one year old. <laughs> you're muted, you're muted. So she will be one year next month. How did that happen so fast? She was just born two seconds ago. Yeah, that's the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. she's she's awesome and i and i and i joke that she's my uh post doc in surrendering to the flow <laughs> awesome. yeah. but it is i mean you know with, with her arrival she just gave me this insight about pleasure and you know the baby totally focused on pleasure and I initially noticed myself saying, you know, in my mind, you know, little girl, that's not how life is. You can't go for pleasure all the time. <laughs> and I thought, why not? <laughs> Maybe she knows something I don't. <laughs> right. So since then, I've been really interested in how can I uh, embody and sustain pleasure in my in my being and then for the first time then that's that's funny because i know i've been studying path work for long, uh, many years and for the first time i read the lecture i think it's 177 not sure but it's called pleasure the the pulsation of life and i was completely amazed because you know in other words in in a nutshell the guide would say that to the extent we deny pleasure, we also deny our spiritual connection. And that for me was like, okay, I've got to work on this. <laughs> so this has been my exploration this year about uh, pleasure. And surrendering to the flow of life has everything to do with pleasure because when we are in the process, there's a lot of pleasure. Uh, the pleasure of being the flow, the pleasure of... You know, being taken by this life force. And, and even though we might go through, you know, difficult 
experiences like pain or anger or fear, there's still pleasure because the pleasure goes away the moment I identify with the emotion or I fight it. But if I just let it pass through me, there is pleasure. Pleasure with the flowing with the pain, pleasure with flowing with the fear, with the anger, with whatever that's flowing, with the contraction. So in a, in a surrendering to the flow experience, I invite people to just go with their body. If their bodies want to contract, contract. If they want to expand, expand. If you want to express your no, express your no. If you express your yes, go in and express your yes. And that keeps us in the flow, not denying the yes or the no, keeps us in the flow. So there, when I work with the group, there are two ways to work with the group, at least two ways, probably many, many more. But there's a way in which I just, I use music and that's an influence from inner dance. So I use music to, um, to create an atmosphere and help people have the experience. Um, but it's not necessary. I, I don't need the music. It's, it's, it just supports me and supports people. So there's a way that I just put music on. And of course, with each music, I have an intention behind it, but I don't mention the intention. I, I, I just have it for myself. And people have the experience. People will go through uh, those stages of consciousness I've mentioned. And also in my book, at, at the second part, I, I describe an experience I had in a workshop and also an experience I had with a group that we met for, I can't remember, how, we met regularly every two weeks for a while, uh, doing the same experience over and over again. And people would start experiencing the same things I've had even before I explained that to them. Uh, because you know, the first time I explained, people get, okay, I, I, I heard what you said, but I can't remember a thing. Let's, let's go to the body. <laughs> And then, you know, so in a two-day workshop, by, by Sunday morning, you know, I've explained to people, we, we did the process a couple of times, and we probably did the third time Sunday morning. And then after Sunday morning, they go, oh, now I see. <laughs> now I notice how I expressed in my body everything you described. Um, and that's for me is one of the, fa the fascinating things about this experience is that it's, I try to build a theory to explain it, but the theory of course is limited. Uh, but people get to experience the same thing or very similar. They describe with the same words. Uh, it reminds me when I was, I started doing uh, exercise groups, core energetics exercise groups in, in, in my university when I was still you know, a core uh, student. And I would guide people through the exercises. And then as we shared, people would say things I've read in Lowen's book, you know, describing the experience in the body. And I thought, oh my God, that's fascinating. <laughs> people are almost using the same words. Um, so that, that also happens when it's surrendering to the flow. Uh, okay, so now I'll guide you through this journey, through the intelligences. And I call them intelligences because they have, it's not random. You know, they know what they're doing. Uh, they have a way to interact with life. They have a way to deal with life. It's like when we are developing, you know, we have very little uh, mind power to, to deal with well, my, my daughter. She's almost one year. She, she has no elaboration about many things. She can stop and think, okay, so this has happened. My mom, mom has gone. Is she's coming back or not? And she, there's, there's no room for that. But there's an intelligence there that keeps moving her. And that's really fascinating. That tells her how to interact with her daily experiences. And I call them structuring. So structuring intelligences, I call them structuring because they are very present in those first years. They're always present, but in those first years of development, they are building the foundation 
of who we are. So they, my understanding is that the process of development until we are seven is the process of embodying each of those intelligences. So they are make they are becoming available for us as we grow older, from a newborn to a toddler and so on. They are becoming available, and our task as an organism is to master them, to know how to use them, to experiment with them, to make them available. And for me, our task as adults is to find our way back to those intelligences because each character defense structure is an expression of one of those intelligences. But in a, as we say, as in, a, in a rigid way, in a solidified way, in a you know, neurotic way to, to use that term. Uh, so it's repetitive, it's, there's no flexibility, there's no creativity. It always wants to solve the problem with the same thing. Um, so it's kind of having, I don't know, mathematical intelligence and I want to solve everything in my life through mathematics. It, it, it won't work. You know, I, I can solve a lot of things with mathematics, but a lot of them I can't. So the, the character defense structures, they are something like that. I want to solve everything with the same intelligence and it doesn't work. Um, so let's go through the intelligences. And I'll, I'll describe my experience with them because that's how it happened. You know, it happened as I danced, it happened as I did my meditations before having them as a concept. Uh, I would experience them in my body. So there is an embodied experience. There is a state of consciousness that comes with it. Uh, sometimes there's move, a specific movement that comes with it. Uh, so I'll, I'll share, and the, the names I call the, the structure intelligences are, uh, are descriptive names. You know, I try to use the names that would describe to me the experience I was having. And it gets to a point where just by in thinking of the name or in, you know, having the intention to connect with it, it makes itself available. And that I find very fascinating. <laughs> and, but, but, but we see that, I mean, core energetics, uh, I know Tammy and Anna are not from core energetics, but um, you probably have some similar experience where you set an intention to have an experience and something changes. Um, in core energetics, for example, when we start working with a particular character defense structure, that changes the energy of the whole room people start to have experiences related to that defense structure. Uh, so that happens with those intelligence. For me, that, that what happens when we start working with a structure and people start having those experiences because the intelligence make itself present and start, it started to move people. So the first intelligence uh, I call it uh, vital energy. So my experience with it happens in my um, pelvic floor. And it feels like an engine. I like there's a deep vibration uh, that starts there. And, and if I allow it, it will start to shake my whole body. What starts from there, it starts from my pelvic floor. And the experience I have in my mind, and it's, it's, a, it's, it's being like a mountain. It's solid and firm and stable. And, I'm, and it feels like being very much in my body. It's very still on the outside, but very alive in the inside. So like, like a mountain that's very and moving on the outside, but inside it's connected to the you know, to the deep depths of the earth, where you know, the magma is fluid and hot and full of energy. So it feels that there's a lot of energy and potential. And for me, it's the same energy when 
um, it, it's it's it it represents the connection between energy and consciousness. So it's like when a when a seed sprouts, when it breaks that dormant state and sprouts, or when I know the ovulum and the sperm connect. There's a there's a big bang moment. You know, there's a, a, a burst of aliveness in that moment. So that's the first intelligence. And when the first intelligence gets disturbed, then we develop what we call as fragmented structure or schizoid structure. Because that intelligence of embodying ourselves, it gets not fully will be fulfilled. So part of it is not fully present. So we are here, but not fully here. We are in our body, but not fully in our body. So energy and consciousness connect. And the moment they connect, they start to flow. They start to move. And as they flow, there's a lot of pleasure. So the second intelligence, I called it pleasure and flow. Pleasure and fluidity, because there's a sense of, it's, it's fluid. It's, and I, it feels like my, and, and then I feel it in my lower belly, closer to my pelvis. And it feels like my pelvis wants to, you know, circle and spiral and, and, it, and my whole body goes with it. And, and there's a pleasure, like a, a delicious pleasure. It feels like eating something very, very delicious. Or, you know, the skin gets awakened and it feels like, you know, when we take a nice warm shower and, oh, this feels so good on my skin or a massage. You know, there's, there's this sensuality to it. But it's the sensuality of life, you know, of, a, of the smells, of the colors, of the, the touches and the, the, the textures uh, and the flavors. It makes me want to smile and laugh. I connect with it. <laughs> and, and when that, that intelligence gets disrupted, then we have the development of the oral uh, uh, or undercharged character structure. Because the experience of self-nurturing, because it's so nurturing, so nourishing to be in that energy. Uh, it, it, it feels like oh, I'm savoring life. I'm, I'm just savoring life. So when that gets disrupted, when my inner flow gets disrupted, I started to become more attentive to the outer flow and I lose touch with my inner flow. And I start to follow the flow of the external life, you know, of you know, the clock or what needs to happen when and where and instead of what wants to flow in here, what, what will bring me pleasure, uh, you know, which movement, which direction, which expression will bring me pleasure. But again, every time the, the flow gets disrupted, the energy that's present there, the intelligence that's present there, it's going to deal with that disruption the best way it can. And the best way it can is what we know as the character defense structures. So the next, so energy and consciousness connect and they start flowing in a very pleasurable way. And the next thing that happens is that as they flow, as it flows, at some point it starts to realize that it's flowing within a container. Before that, it feels like I'm just flowing. And then at some point the container starts to become noticeable. And then it becomes interesting to realize that as I flow, I, I, I change the container. I change the space around me. 
as I make my sounds, I affect other people around me. As I change things, I affect the environment. So the third intelligence is when we start moving towards that autonomy, that realization that, oh, I have some autonomy. I have some, I have some freedom to do things here. And what I do interfere with things here. Even though I'm in my flow and I'm just following that flow, it's changing every time what's around me. So there is a curiosity and uh, and wanting to experiment with that creative energy, with my capacity to change the environment around me. And when that energy gets disrupted, when that flow gets disrupted, then we have the formation of the um, overcharged and masochist character structure. Because then that energy that was moving outwards, then it has to be pulled back in. So my autonomy gets uh, harmed, gets, I, I get limited autonomy. I don't trust that I can just flow and intervene in the in this space around me. But as the energy flows, as I start to explore the space around me, so I feel that energy, mostly my solar plexus, and the third intelligence, and what I, what my, my arms feel like spreading out, you know, like as if I was kind of touching the space around me and, and feeling it and changing it and just becoming present to the space around me. Then as I do that, at some point I hit an, an obstacle. Let's say I hit a wall and the wall is a limit. It limits my movement. I can't go through it. I can knock it down. So at least in the beginning, it feels like a limitation. But then I realized with that limitation, I can actually try something new. Before that, I was flowing, you know, like a particle in the universe. (laughs) And then suddenly there's something that limits me and I can know my edges. And I can know my edges and I can know my power and my strength and I can push it. And I can push it with all my power. And that gives me a sense of power. So the fourth intelligence, I call it power. The third and fourth intelligence, no, sorry. The third intelligence is power. But power can go towards, so it has, it has these two gradations. So initially is my movement towards autonomy. And then later it becomes my movement towards this power of pushing and setting boundaries. But it's the same intelligence. It has two, it has two nuances. And depending on when the, the flow gets disrupted, a different character structure will be formed. So if it gets disrupted when we are, I'm starting to explore, then I have the masochist. If I have, if it gets disrupted when I'm experiencing the, the power of pushing and boundaries, then I have what we call the, the psychopath or upper displacement. Because then I get focused on fighting. Everything is a fight. I need to fight. I need to push things. I need to, you know, I, I need to establish my power. I, I get, I get um, fixated on that intelligence and I start using it for everything, as I said. Okay, so let's let's start the flow again. <laughs> so energy and consciousness connect, then they start moving with pleasure. Then as it moves, it starts to interfere in the space around it. And as it interferes, it finds limitations and then it can experience its power its power to push to set boundaries like an, a wild animal that growls and you respect it i remember i was in a safari in africa once and 
we were watching the rhinos from a distance in a car. And the driver got a bit closer and the rhino just moved towards, just shift its look towards us. And everybody in the car was like, <gasps> everybody could feel the power of the rhino. It didn't do much. It just turned to us. <laughs> and that's the third intelligence. That's, that's, that's the power that's available. No? The, the rhino said, if you guys get closer, I'll knock your, your car down. I <laughs> will knock your car over. And we knew that. Everybody in the car knew that. Uh, so that's the energy of power. It, it, the rhino didn't need to be aggressive. It just set its boundary. And then we move to the next intelligence. So at the next intelligence, I call it, it's the fourth intelligence and I call it order. Because when I connect with it, my experience is, is of something very orderly, is the, is the sense of order in the universe. You know, the order that makes the flowers be the way they are, you know, the feathers of birds, you know, so beautifully uh, built. Uh, the order in the universe that makes the planets not fall upon each other. Just this, this yeah, the sense of order, order. And when we get to this point in the process, we are, we have ownership of three basic tools. The first tool is our vital energy, the first intelligence. The second tool is a capacity to flow and experience pleasure, the second intelligence. And the third tool is our power, creative power, boundary power, and that's the third intelligence. And when we get to this point, it's like everything comes back to me. You know, it's like it feels, and people have described like this, it feels like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fully developed human being. I have ownership of my instruments to deal with life. And I can choose how I'm going to use them. How I'm going to use my vital energy, how I'm going to use my pleasure, how I'm going to use my power. How, how can I use it to create more order in the space around me, in my life, in people's life? But if the flow gets disrupted there, I become fixated in the order. So it becomes the order for itself becomes perfection so i want things to be perfect i want everything to be organized and perfect just for the sake of it just because i want because it's better for some reason so it's mechanic it becomes mechanic you know a robot a machine can make things perfect over and over and over and over the same thing same same thing nature can't do that Nature is always changing. You know, hundreds of birds, millions of birds are born. Even if they're the same species, they're different from each other. You know, nature doesn't have this mechanic uh, aspect that you know, can imprint the same thing mechanically over and over. So if we get stuck in order, we get stuck in this robotic perfection it's efficient because it, 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 may, it creates things, makes it happen, but it lacks, it lacks something that only the next intelligence will bring us to that. But then here, there is a challenging point because moving from the fourth intelligence to the, next, to the fifth, it's often a bit scary because it feels like we are going to let go of this self that I've just built. I've just built this self, now I have to let it go. And that feels scary. 
So I usually say that we have to cross a bridge at this point. And in my body, the energy of other order is in the point between, it is the point at the tip of my sternum bone, at in my chest, when the bone ends, the chest bone ends. At that tip, that's where I feel the energy of order. And then as we move and we make a choice, am I going to use my, my gifts, my, my intelligences just for myself, just to build things for myself? Or am I going to use it to serve life? To serve life's best interest? Am I going to surrender myself to life? Am I going to surrender everything I've built so far to life? So the fifth intelligence, I call it sacred beauty. Because that's the experience I have of being within something very sacred and very beautiful. So it, in my body, it, it's in my upper chest, just below my throat uh, bit, just below it, something opens up. And, and if the energy is very intense, like we are working, we are moving, we are breathing, and the energy is moving a lot in my body, I will experience usually some sort of grief and some crying, some profound crying, which has to do with every time somehow I disrespected life. Every time I didn't honor the wisdom of life within me. Every time I tried to contain it. Every time I tried to limit it, to make it smaller. And that's the challenging, the challenging moving from the fourth to the fifth intelligence, because it's moving from that order that feels very centered, and integrated to something that feels beautiful, sacred, but completely surrendered. It feels that I, I don't own myself anymore. Life owns me. Uh, so sometimes people experience fear. Sometimes they usually fear of dying or going crazy, or uh, because there's there's this sense of I'm, I have to let go. I have to let go of who I am. I have to let go of the things I'm holding myself to to get into that energy. But then once you get into it and you look back, it didn't matter at all. Huh? The fear is gone. What seemed to be something that you're going to lose something, actually you, you gain a lot from being in touch with this energy, with this intelligence. And when we go into the intelligence of sacred beauty, then we are beyond the character defense structures. Because so far, in the character defense structures, it's always focusing on the outside because it's looking for danger. The intelligences, they are about the inner experience, the, the, the intelligence opening within you. But when you move to the fifth intelligence, to the sacred beauty, there is no internal and external. It's one thing only. So there's nothing to fight. There's nothing to defend yourself from in that state of mind. 
is just profound, complete surrender. And it's just beautiful. <laughs> mm. But the energy keeps moving. <laughs> we are not staying here forever. <laughs> Is this blissful state? So as the intelligence, as the energy, as the flow continues, it takes us to the next intelligence, to the sixth intelligence, which I call uh, pure presence. And suddenly the emotional blissful nature of the fifth intelligence disappears and all that remains is a profound silence, profound stillness, spaciousness. It's like a moment when we witness everything that just happened. It's life witnessing itself. And of course, I thought at some point, wow, that's the goal. It's either to be in sacred beauty or in pure presence. That's the goal. Because, you know, that's what you know, religions talk about. That's what, you know, spirituality talks about. Meditation is to get to this point of completely silent stillness or, into, or this blissful state. But then I realized that there are two other intelligences that you know, life, because a lot of this also happened through random people bringing me what I call pieces of the, the puzzle. So, so I'll meet with someone and someone will say something to me and that would fit in the puzzle. And I thought, oh, that's fascinating. Or I would go and have an experience and that would fit in the puzzle. So one person, I was doing a meditation once and this one person, and I talked about the intelligence to this person. And the person said, oh, and there is another one. And she called it, uh, angelic but my experience is I call it the union because for me it feels like the union between the sacred beauty and pure presence it has a stillness but it also has some bliss on it uh, I, I have very very little information about them because I I've reached them in very special occasions for a brief time so I, the, I, I know very little the taste of it. And then the next one, the person said, and there is the source. And I remember being absorbed by this thing and then having the sense that I went home. And I don't know about you, but I spent a lot of therapy sessions crying and hitting the the cube saying that I wanted to go home. <laughs> I was tired of this shit. <laughs> tired of this planet and this and everything. And I just wanted to go home. And on this day, on this experience, I went home. And the next thing I know, I'm back here with the flow of intelligence in my body. And I said, wait, 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 wait. Wasn't it the purpose to go home and have a comeback? <laughs> and then that's when I realized surrendering to the flow, because I realized that the purpose is not to be any of those intelligences, but to be in the flow that's constantly happening, moving from one to another, all the time in our daily lives, every time, sometimes with more awareness, sometimes with less awareness, of course, when we are doing a, a workshop or 
experience we are focused on that so it becomes way more evident but it's always present and different situations in life will call upon will, will bring forth the need of using different intelligences sometimes you need to use you know, your power and your setting boundaries sometimes it's time to use pleasure and flow with it sometimes it's time to surrender and and dissolve yourself into life and connection with other people so surrendering to the flow of life is about being in that flow not getting stagnant in any of those intelligences because getting stagnant in any of those intelligences is character defense structure but there's no way to get stagnant in sacred beauty and there's no way to get stagnant in pure presence because the moment you try to hold them they disappear <laughs> so uh so it can only get stagnant in the previous ones that we know as character defense structures. So that's surrendering to the flow of life. So that's what I try to speak about in my book to help people have, I know I wanted to share with people. People start asking, do you have anything written about this? And said, so, oh, I think it's time to get something written about this. Uh, so I started writing and it and it the pandemic came and everything got confused with that. But anyway, um, so that's what I tried to describe in my book the best I could, you know, how this influences I've received took me to experiment in my body those intelligences and how they relate to the character defense structures and what happened when i shared this with other people that didn't went through the same process i have uh, didn't go but they also had very similar experiences And it's fascinating because uh, each of those intelligence, they will interact with life differently. So, for example, once I was having like a discussion with my wife and, you know, I, I was kind of trying to defend my point of view and it was, you know, a bit rough, like, like <laughs> bullfight kind of thing. <laughs> And, and then she said, oh, I'm going to do something else. We are not getting anywhere. And then she left. And I thought, oh, shit. We were just like trying to push each other into each other's point of view. <laughs> and then I started moving through the intelligences in my body and started allowing them to express themselves. And then when she got back, I was in sacred beauty. The moment she entered the door and I looked at her, I didn't even remember what we were discussing about. I just felt like profound love and wanting to connect with her. And it didn't matter <laughs> because that's the difference between the intelligences. They, they change completely the way we see life at that moment, depending on which one is more active. Hmm. Ah, I think that's it. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. So we have 10 minutes. Um, and I wonder if, if I want to share anything or ask anything, if anything was not clear enough. Well, I just want to say thank you very much for the lecture. Uh, that was interesting and uh, really well served. Uh, in the meantime, I ordered the book and hopefully it will come before my trip to, um, because I'm going to have another module of my chronogenetic studies. And, uh, and I live currently, I live in Norway, so I hope it will come before I leave for Poland. Mm -hmm. uh, and we will see. I, I really, I'm looking forward to, to, to that book and yeah, 
then I will, I will, uh, we keep in touch. I will contact you when I'm done uh, reading and uh, then we can talk. Because mm -hmm. now I'm like a baby. I mean, I had my experience from some other sites, but uh, yeah, I need to read that book and yeah. Then I will have questions, I'm sure. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to thank you also. Sounds very exciting. And uh, it was nice to see you. I hope I see you again in Portugal, maybe. Mm -hmm. New life. Maybe. Yes. Not sure yet, but <laughs> <laughs> at <Yeah>. some point. <laughs> Nothing is sure, huh? everything is changing. Yeah, it's um, the trauma development course that I, I was with you in New Life was really a, a breakthrough, was a change, life changing for me. And uh, I'm really excited to, to read more about it or to know more about it. Mm -hmm. My best wishes for you. Obrigado. Uh, I, I just realized, I'm not sure if your name is Katerina. How do, you, how do I say your name? Well, uh, the pronunciation is Katarzyna. Uh, uh -huh, but uh, here in Norway, people called me simple, like Kate, because that's the easiest for them. And it's easy to remember. And for me, it doesn't really matter because soon I will get my citizenship and then I'm changing my, my name in total. Mm. So it will be just Katarina. Ah, really? And everyone will be able to remember the pronunciation. It will be international. Yeah. Okay. So, so. I'm already calling you your new name. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, I want to thank you. And uh, I don't know what what's the time uh, where, where you are now. I, I'm in Norway and I have to go and Lay me down because I'm starting my training tomorrow morning. Sure. So you sleep uh, long enough. So thank you very much, ladies, and you. <laughs> thank you. And uh, yeah, take care of yourself. And yeah. Bye. Bye bye. Just want to say thank you, Fernando. I have the book. <laughs> I yeah highlighted and checked a, a lot of different parts of it, so it's it's been great just because you know of course we shared um, TRE and inner dance and um, yeah just during the pandemic then I was just on this marathon of going to all these workshops and seminars online and um, just to you know geeking out in the in the trauma world <laughs> um, as well as just um, um, yeah, you know, more the psychology of it. Um, I think the, uh, I only read the, finished the book, I think just uh, a month ago, um, but a bit of the pandemic brain. But what I think <laughs> the, the, uh, the piece that I, I connect to most is really just remembering to, to connect back to like life force and flow and source. Um, and it's so easy to forget with, things happening externally and that can be the the distraction and you know just like the experience you shared with, with your wife where oh you know you didn't the, the, the argument was um such the focus point but then when um you know you guys took a break and then you connected back to sacred beauty um then it's just connecting back closer to or close to the source um and it's i think just like a a good message for these times too getting so caught up in the the external and you know so much of the chatter um whereas we remember to connect back to the sacred beauty and life force and and flow um then we we notice a shift and uh we, we are able to see things from a different perspective and move through things from a different perspective um i think the more that we you know do practice that then um yeah, like with anything, it's a practice and it gets, it gets easier. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I appreciate the book and I'm sure I'll be referring to it a lot as well. 
Yeah. Really good to have you here, Tammy. Really good to see you. I hope our paths cross again in person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I'll, I'll video chat later so I can get the, the, the baby time. Um, <laughs> that time. I was secretly hoping there'd be like at least 10 seconds of that, but um, it's not why I came either. So <laughs> I'm not gonna, I, I, I you know, I went, but I went 